A warm bakery filled with otters? Yeah, why not? That's exactly what my friends at Cadoris Catering wanted for their Imperium Medium home. The free company's leader in particular wanted a warm space with greenery and knickknacks true to his RP character that could chase away the chill of even the stoniest Guardian noble. And if that sounds like something you've been wanting for your own house this winter, then I'll be going over my design process, from floor plan to completion. And I'll include build guides for the more glitch-heavy furniture so you can recreate them for your own designs. So, let's go! Welcome back, beautiful blooms! The floor plan for this build makes use of two floors, the ground floor and the basement, with the ground floor embracing the natural T-shape that medium houses have in Final Fantasy XIV. Which, if you've ever built in a medium, then you know this is harder than it sounds because that foyer area is surrounded by two staircases, which are a pain in the butt to build around. But there's so much square footage there that I think it's a shame to leave it minimally decorated. So I took advantage of that space and turned the entrance into a cafe style dining area with smaller tables and a closed employee entrance to the downstairs. That said, I didn't want the northern wall to be bare because it's the first thing you see when you enter the house, so it needed to provide a focal point that makes you want to explore further inside. To accomplish this, I turned that area into bar counter seating facing an aquarium showcase featuring one of Kador's proudest catches. The east wing behind the ground floor staircase is a dining area with booth seating for larger parties, while the west houses the storefront, which is kept open so players can access the workshop and private rooms. And finally, the basement was transformed into a kitchen with a cute little secret nook I'll get into later in the video. Now let's get into the nitty gritty, shall we? Starting with the entrance itself. The doorway was made using one of my favorite tricks, and that's to frame an existing door in game. The item slot economy is a real thing, people! So if you want the look of a custom door without sacrificing too many item slots for it, then this trick is the best way to go about it. I framed the door from the medium cafe walls with a slanted wall, a slanted skylight, and a white rectangular partition floated above the door to complete the custom wall. I also added a towel hanger by floating it backwards to make it a more fancy looking door handle. It can snap to the front of the slanted wall so you can treat them like you would a stage panel and freely float wall mounted items backwards this way. Speaking of which, you'll notice that there's custom wainscoting or a two tone look to the walls. This was achieved by floating several small black boards backwards with the help of a wooden beam to place them. Since they're small and won't snap to the front of the slanted walls, it was an easy way to create that elevated look and add more wood tones to the space. And they're dyeable too. In this case, they're bark brown, which complements the textured white walls and loosely matches the trim, which those can't be dyed. Only the white part of the slanted walls can be dyed. An imitation highland window paired with an old rose planner dyed ruby red and a planner partition accents the entrance with a touch of wintry frosted glass and color. Finally, a Nimian wall lantern doubles as both a light source and a makeshift bell over the door. Now to the left of the front door, or to your right when you first walk in, is a nice big custom window that flanks one of the cafe tables. Just like with the door, the walls framing the window are a slanted wall and a slanted skylight with a white rectangular partition up top. The actual window that gives you sun rays is an imitation square window dyed bark brown. To create the arches at the top of the windows, I floated one glade cupboard and kept it its default color. The windowsill and the handles on the window are from one manor cupboard dyed bark brown, like most of the other pieces in this space. Finally, the ornate lines on the window panes are actually log racks. To get this exact look, you'll need four of them. And a word of caution, they're a furnishing item, not a tabletop item. I made that mistake <laughs> during the building process and I paid for it. So you'll want to place all four on the ground where you want them and try to float them all at once so that they're neatly lined up, which makes for a grand total of 10 item slots per window. Now there's three of these windows throughout the build, the one in the entrance and two more in the larger dining space in the east wing. They use the exact same items. The only difference is I dyed the manor counters in the dining space Keycaren brown instead of bark brown to accommodate for different lighting and aesthetic goals. I wanted the windows in the dining space to blend in more, where the one in the entrance needed to help the dining chairs pop with a bit of contrast, so I made it darker there. 
Now, two of the windows hug the ground floor stairs. So if you want to build in similar spots, keep in mind, you're going to need to use the storage placement glitch and have a lot of patience. I promise this looks like a terrifying abomination on screen, but it's easier than it looks. And there are plenty of tutorials that will teach you how to do this. Of course, if you'd rather I make one, then let me know in the comments below. The final thing framing these windows are these really cute custom flower pots on the wall. These are actually extremely simple and only cost two slots a piece. And these items are an imitation small window paired with a mounted flower vase. In this case, the vases are dyed Roland Berry Red for a rich velvety look. So these are actually a remnant of the Free Company's previous version of the bakery. The leader, Kidor, had decorated this place back when it was just a goblet small, and I love these cute little flower plots he came up with so much. So when he said he wanted to fill the upgraded medium with a bunch of flowers, I knew I wanted to repurpose these vases. Not only do the windows from them provide more light throughout the in-game day, but it's one of those things that helps keep his personal touch alive in the build. Or at least I like to think so, because that's important to me. If I build for someone else, I still want the house to feel like them, even if it's through the lens of my design aesthetic, because it's their house, right? <laughs> Now moving further into the house, one of the first things you might notice is actually the skylight and fake ceiling. In this case, the fake ceilings are predominantly made of troop stages dyed snow white. By creating a fake ceiling, you have control of both texture and color. Since the bakery design leans a wee tad rustic with all of the wood tones, I wanted that reflected in the ceiling too. And troop stages have a very pronounced wood grain texture compared to other common ceiling materials. Another thing I love about troop stages is they're also very reflective on FF14's higher settings. They look polished. And because of this, they reflect colors and light, which is why you see all the yellows and reds I use in the flowers throughout the house in the ceiling. And that effect lends to extending your color palette throughout the room while making the space feel bigger and brighter. That said, if you build a faux ceiling, then you need to be mindful of taller characters and camera collision. Most items used for fake ceilings don't have camera collision. So your camera will zoom through these stages and will show all the innards and it's just very disorienting. So while you can't see them, I do have several glade canopy beds hidden in the ceiling because for some reason those don't have collision. And now these days using indoor Eastern ponds will do the same job and cover more space per item. So you'll save slots, but Glade canopy beds are much cheaper, and in this particular design, it was easier to place them around the skylight. And speaking of the skylight, since Kidor and his character loves otters, it was a perfect opportunity to use the otter, otter, hanging, and in lamp. Say that three times fast. And since he wanted to fill the bakery with green, I used my tried and true ivy curtains and very carefully placed them around the chandelier so that they would catch the light and cast the shadows of their vines. Framing the skylight are four mahogany aqueducts in their default color and eight full thresholds from the Domen Enclave. Not only do the thresholds provide collision and help hide nooks and crannies in the ceiling, but they also provide more sunbeams for that added bit of warmth in the center of the house since there were no windows in that space. Now the north wall features a big tier 4 aquarium with custom made bar seating. Like the rest of the custom features in the space, the aquarium is framed with slanted skylights on either side with a white rectangular partition floated above it. In this case, I let the aquarium's natural frame show because I liked the wooden details and thought they fit the overall aesthetic. For a final touch, I added three old rose planters across the top in ruby red and honey yellow. And like I mentioned earlier, the colors bounce off the ceiling and make them more pronounced. Now the custom bar in front of it is made of eight total items. The countertop is made of three antique shelves. The ornate gold frame beneath them are two marimbas, which is, I have a picture of the default item up on screen for you if you have no idea what that actually is or what it looks like on its own. And finally, the stone texture is made of three masonwork stoves floated up from an unused portion of the basement. Now to the left of this is the actual bakery counter, and this one is super simple. All you need to do for the counter itself is one swinging door counter and two bar counters, which are dyed russet brown here. 
Up front are two pastry covers, also dyed russet brown to match. Now the custom blackboard menu to the bottom right is also really easy to do. Float a small blackboard with the help of a wooden beam, facing forward this time. Then with the help of a Riviera wall shelf, you'll want two sets of wooden plates and shove them into the board until only the sides peek out to look like lines. These are dyed snow white here, but since it's a chalkboard, you can dye them any color you want and it'll look like chalk. Now, since I keep the space behind the counter open so that FC members can access the workshop, those plates will be visible behind the counter. Now, if you don't care, leave them. I personally do, so I placed a red brick counter in the back to hide them, and I also think it adds to the immersion of the space anyway. Speaking of behind the counter, there's a custom corner shelf. This was made using one rustic chocobo counter in russet brown with a matching ice box. The mounted plate rack and bar rack are both dyed bark brown, however. The rest of the clutter consists of a crustarium teapot and another stack of wooden plates, this time undyed. Finally, above the counter is a stony texture where three pendant wall lights hang from. That texture is made from the bottom of two more mason work stoves, which help to frame and bring attention to the counter. Which I do the same thing for the east wing dining area. Two more mason work stoves up top with two undyed rose trellises and two planar partitions frame the entrance. This was another opportunity to fit more otters into the design, so there's a couple of really cute otter. Hold on. Otter otter wall lanterns there to greet you and light up the space. <laughs> Another thing to say three times fast if you can. As for the dining area itself, there really isn't much glitch-wise that I haven't already covered. The windows and aquarium are the exact same as their counterparts I've already shown. The only difference on the aquarium is instead of creating counter seating in front of it, I instead used two bar counters dyed russet brown with two planar partitions in front of them. And then a potted dragon's tree and a potted elephant's ear frames the whole thing. As for the dining booth seating, I simply shoved the leather couches in into the wall so that the third cushion is hidden and only two are accessible in each. It makes for a more manageable size and it just makes it feel a little more cozy, or at least I think so. Ooh, and with that we've broken down the entirety of the ground floor. Thank you for sticking with me because I know it was one build right after the other, but that's just how it is when you use more custom glitch furniture. <laughs> Which means we finally get to the basement, and the door to the basement is framed in exactly the same way as all the custom features in the bakery, with slanted walls, slanted skylights, and a white rectangular partition. Broken record by now, but it works. Now the stairwell was a bit of a challenge. Because I used so many slanted items for my walls, it looked ugly. Ugly, it looked ugly, so ugly. It was jagged and unnatural, and that's just the thing you have to deal with if you want to create more complicated designs like this, where rooms are built behind each other. So you have to either be very careful what items you use for details, or you need to leave space and enough item slots to hide any bits you don't want exposed. In this case, I opted to close in the stairs which was done with several marble partitions dyed bone white with a luminous wooden loft and an imitation skylight closing off the ceiling in the lower half of the stairs. Now, HG14 has a tutorial on how to do this, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below, because while their video focuses on white rectangular partitions, the premise is still the same regardless of whatever items you use, as long as it's a furnishing class item. The kitchen itself is definitely an area I'd like to revisit if we get those promised item slots in Dawn Trail, but I do still like how it came out. It serves its purpose and it doesn't have any glitching to it, so there's no build guides really to go over. Down here, I went with the country walls for a homey look and made sure to fill the space with all the NPCs the free company could want and need. Plus, they just kind of look like the bakery's employees, don't they? Or I think so, at least. The biggest thing in terms of structure was using the blank oasis partitions to close it in because I thought the trimmings and the wainscoting fit with the color scheme upstairs. Also, at the time I built this, the Highland Walls weren't released yet, so if the free company ever wants a refresh, that would probably be one of the first things I would change. But that's neither here nor there because at the beginning of this video, I promised a cute little hidden nook. And so here it is.
Kador wanted a secret treasure room to keep the FC chest in, and it's just this cute little space we can go full Scrooge McDuck with. A luminous wooden loft banks the ceiling with blank oasis partitions for walls sporting the stained crystal interior wall. The unending journey makes a cute little record keeping counter, plundered treasure scatters coins across the floor, and all of it is hidden by a trick bookshelf partition actually used for its intended purpose, who would have thought? And the cherry on top is the adorable otter otter lantern that makes it look like this furry little friend has stumbled upon Kador's hidden cash stash. As always, a big shout out to my friends at Kidora's Catering for letting me build their bakery for them. I had an absolute ball with this project and it always makes me happy when someone trusts me enough to take on their houses for them. I don't typically design in neutrals, so this build was an important exercise for me in embracing white walls and a whole range of wood tones. And I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity, so thank you everyone. And of course, thank you for watching. If you found my guides helpful and don't want to miss my future designs, then please feel free to subscribe and leave a like. I've also got another design tour up on the screen for you if you can't wait until the next one. So until next time, see you then.